Welcome, my friends, to another edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Today, we're going to follow up with uh, episode six of our video series on various firms' online portfolio tools and their recommendations that they give, their fees that they charge and whatnot. And uh, this one, I kind of threw it at the last minute, Betterment, uh, betterment.com. So I'm actually uh, uh, familiar and, and somewhat fond of what Bet Betterment's doing, actually. And, um, and I want to go into it because I think they do offer some pretty good services uh, you know, the Schwab, the Vanguard, the, uh, the Fidelity offers the same kind of USA. I don't think T. Rowe Price had a robo-advisor, but those other firms have their like robo-advisors uh, where you pay a small fee, you know, one half, one percent or less. And they'll, you know, they'll do the grunt work for it in terms of rebalancing, giving an efficient portfolio that's well diversified using low cost ETFs. And that's perfect. Uh, Betterman actually um, is relatively new to the business, and uh, I don't think they've got nearly the same chops in terms of how much assets they have relative to a Vanguard or a Schwab. I mean, those guys just have I mean, Vanguard's got trillions of dollars. I'm not quite sure how much Schwab has, but uh, you know, they dwarf anything that Betterman has. But you know, Betterman might be a new uh, a new kid on the block, but I think they offer some interesting stuff. So let's go into them here. Uh, limited time, limited time offer. Sign up today and get your one year managed free. All right, well, that's interesting. I'm gonna look at this right quick, just because uh, that's interesting. Sign up today, make a deposit. Will automatically waive your management fee. The amount of time you get managed free is based on the total amount you deposit within 45 days of opening account. Okay. Uh, the more you deposit, the more time managed free. Okay. So if you deposit 250 thousand bucks, they'll give you the first year free. Uh, and then you can see that uh, pretty interesting. I'm a, I'm a fan. So, all right, let's see what they got. Uh, resources by Betterment, our portfolios. Let's check it out. And then we'll find out how much it costs. Um, <laughs> built on noble prize winning research. I, uh, I just, I guess so. <sighs> um, a lot of firms use uh, academic research as a validation of what they're doing, and uh, and, and that's fine. I, I just how quickly we forget the long term cap capital management fiasco of the late 1990s. Uh, that was that was literally Nobel Prize winning research as well, and it almost cost the complete destruction of the capitalist societies. I mean, there's no other way around that. I mean, maybe not wouldn't it be red commies taking over Washington, D.C., but in terms of the amount of destruction that could have happened you know, by LTCM going bankrupt based on their Nobel Prize winning research that uh, uh, and we, we, we're using something now called uh, evidence based investing. And I, see, the problem with that is this backward looking. It says in the past, our evidence shows you that this works. Well, it doesn't show you that it works. Going forward, it show you that it worked huh, worked in the past, not in the future. Investing is a human beings that are doing acting irrationally and actually what they think is rationally when in fact it's irrationally. Now, groups like Betterment, Vanguard, Schwab and stuff are making it more efficient by offering index funds, but still people are going to engage in irrational behavior. It's just I mean, that's just a fact. And so when you're saying, well, in the past, these strategies worked and we have Nobel Prize um, award winning economics professors, but now it doesn't mean anything because going forward, that doesn't necessarily hold true. It just doesn't. And I just I always use the example of dogs of the Dow. I guess about 25 years ago, I think it was actually Molly Fool when they first started running uh, investment the research stuff. They had a report on dogs of the Dow. And I, mean, I remember I jumped in that head over heels. Oh, this is great. I'm going to be a millionaire. It just it ceased to work because once everyone understands the the momentum and everybody flows into that, well, the momentum is yesterday's news. Now something else is the momentum. We don't know what that new thing will be. You know, if it's going to be value momentum, like USA is not running some new uh, value and momentum ETFs. That's based on past research, too. But uh, anyway. Hey, look, I don't have a problem with using this built on Nobel Prize winning research. In of itself, they're trying to say, hey, we have more science behind us. What they're trying to say, there's more science behind us than, I don't know, some guys, you know, selling mutual funds with a five and a half percent commission. I, I don't have a problem, but I just, I hate the insinuation that means there's something that we can lay our hat on that will be happening in the future when an investment world is engaged in irrational behavior by human beings. Sorry, I just got to get off my soapbox there. But anytime I see Nobel Prize winning research or evidence-based investing, I just want to take a vice 
and squeeze and blow my head off because it's, it again insinuates things do happen in the future based on the research done in the past. And you just can't make that assumption. You just can't. All right. So uh, with that said, uh, see a complete list of our stock ETFs and bond ETFs. So let's see what they're doing here. Um, I'm just looking out the window to see one of my kids playing. Yeah, I just came back from playing with them, as a matter of fact. It's fun working from home. All right. Uh, so stocks, are, you total. Okay. So basically, they're the same kind of thing as Vanguard and Schwab. Total stock index, they got a bunch of different uh, uh, ETFs. So this is what they're doing. Um, they have a model portfolio. So I want to see if there's. Uh, what bond ETFs are used in the betterment portfolio? Uh, read more about stock and bond, stock and bond funds used in the portfolio strategy here. So I'm looking for the okay high quality bonds. So they're using uh, U.S. high quality bonds, uh, BND ETF, AGG. Okay, so the basic stuff there. Okay, so good. So they're using. Um, ETFs, low cost ETFs, that's that's fine. So I don't have any problem with that in the least. In fact, that's exactly what I'd expect. Um, what are the potential tax differences between ETFs? Uh, hold on just a second, my friends. All right, so we're using the low cost, uh, high quality ETFs in terms of the diversification. Uh, what is funds are in the better minister of the kernel? That's what the potential tax are. Just try app asset allocation. I just want to see if they get a model portfolio. How often my account be adjusted? Choose to getting fine. My blah, 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 blah. advice, Roth conversion. All right, so I don't see anything about the uh, model portfolio. I'm sure it's in here. I know what it is because I've seen it before. Uh, just let me see real quick. All right, there's got to be a model portfolio. Getting investing strategies. Let's see if this is it right here. Uh, okay, what? Uh, here we go. What is the betterment portfolio allocation? Okay. See the breakdown of ETFs at each allocation. All right, quit. It's quit. Sweet. Um, I, I knew that they had something like this in the past. So uh, asset class, asset class weight at every allocation. All right. So basically weighted assets. We use ETFs as a result from this process in our allocation. Yeah, this doesn't. It's hard to follow there, isn't it? Stock allocation. Okay, I see what they're doing. So if you have 40% stock, uh, I don't know. Okay, I see. So if you have 40% stock, you're going to have 3.6 in that. You're going to have 17.2% international bonds, 15% total stock. Okay, eh, that's a tough chart to see. <laughs> All right, that's a tough chart. Um all right, uh, we use these, okay. So it's gonna be, so basically you have a mix of all of these different ETFs right here, all right? So you're gonna have, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I think it's 12, yeah, 12 ETFs, maybe 13. Uh, so it's very highly diversified. Oh, here we go, that's exactly what I was looking for. Here's their uh, stocks. They're using Vanguard, Total Stock Index. They're using Schwab, uh, yeah, Schwab here. Um, High shares, Vanguard. So they're, they're basically using the biggest ones that are out there. So that's that's good. Um, and here's a bunch of ETF selection for portfolio construction. Okay. So at the end of the day, uh, Betterment, and that's to be expected, they're using a mix of the, the biggest and best Schwab, iShares, and Vanguard. Um, I presume there might be another firm in there, but Schwab, iShares, and Vanguard, maybe BlackRock. I think BlackRock does. I can't remember. But anyway, so the biggest and the best. I mean, that's what they're doing. That, and then you can see how well diversified, uh, in fact, there's their expense ratio on the funds they use. Uh, the fund, the ETFs that they're using, 0. 0.13. The uh, industry average uh, is, is what, three, four, five times that roughly. And this is mutual fund data. Asset weight expense ratios are calculated by using uh, ETFs and mutual fund data from the ICI, which is the Investment Company Institute. Um, I, that even right there sounds pretty low. To be perfectly honest with you, it seems pretty low to me, uh, simply because they're taking all the share classes in mass, in mass, to include all the institutional ones and whatnot. And you don't have access to a lot of those share classes as a retail investor. So I suggest that's much higher than what this is showing here. But we know the betterment is going to be that because they're using the funds 
the ETFs that are inside their portfolios that we know for a fact what the fees are. So their fees can be significantly lower for the mutual funds or the ETF expenses that they use on the industry average significantly. We'll look at pricing. All right, so uh, pricing, let's see here. So here, uh, for a 0.25, uh, you get uh, 0.25, you get personalized financial advice, know how much to invest, your recommendation allocation more. And that's digital. Remember, we talked about the digital investor with Fidelity, uh, Schwab, the Vanguard. I didn't, I didn't see a digital investor. I mean, I saw a, a, quad, a hybrid of digital plus a financial advice area, which is you know 0.35% using Van, Vanguard ETFs. Uh, which is going to be kind of like this right here, but I didn't see a solely digital one. I, I don't know if they even have one actually. Automatic rebalancing, advanced tax saving strategies. I'm, I'm a fan of this stuff right here. Not so much the tax loss harvesting, but I do like the idea of asset location. And I'll get into that in different episodes, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I think Betterment can do that for you pretty well. Uh, access to licensed financial experts anytime, anywhere. So you can call somebody who can uh, answer your questions. Uh, that's good. So all that for 0.25. There's John Stein. Is that John? That doesn't look like John Stein. He's the owner or the guy who founded Vanguard. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, John Stein is the guy who started. Actually, let's take a look. They have a way we can do this. Not retired my annual income. I think I've been saying 75000 Start your investment plan. I like Betterment, frankly, guys, just because it's a new kid on the block. And I, and I always like the, the new kid. Um, Betterman started initially as trying to take out financial advisors such as myself. They realized, oh, it's not competing. We can certainly join forces to offer financial planning advice and let Betterman handle the day-to-day -day trading and whatnot. That's absolutely the way to go. So uh, uh, Betterman has come around more to our side than, and we've kind of met halfway, the financial advisory of, uh, industry plus the Betterman's. Betterman's were saying you could do it online. We say, no, you need one of us because we're so smart. And Betterman said, you don't need one of us because the computer does everything and human beings are rational. We said, no. And so it's a big Grand Canyon, like, you know, just yawning uh, divergence there. Um, over the last couple of years, though, we've kind of come and met halfway where we say, you know, the robo advisors, the algorithms and stuff, low cost indexing, uh, that absolutely makes sense. It, not, very few people argue that anymore, but people still need a person, a live human being. Uh, to help them. And that makes sense too. So Betterman and a financial advisor are some of the best of both worlds. What what Vanguard is doing is close. What Schwab is doing is close, but because they're not doing full-fledged financial planning, it's not quite the same. Um, and Vanguard, now Betterman doesn't offer that. I, well, we'll see, but they don't, I know for a fact, well, I presume they don't offer full-fledged financial planning with a financial planner in-house. I think they do invest in allocation discussions like Vanguard, Schwab, USA, and Fidelity and T. Rowe, but they don't do the real financial planning. So a financial planner like me, I would use Betterment, uh, put my clients there, let Betterment manage the money, rebalance it, allocate it and all that, make tax efficient trading and investing. Absolutely. Um, but when it comes to financial planning, they don't, they don't have the chops. They just don't. They have uh, people who can do investment discussions and investment allocations, but that's it. And real financial planning is a lot more than that. All right. So basically they're saying uh, the two portfolios based on my age and income. This would be probably a uh, safety net conservative portfolio using a pre-tax income. We estimate a target amount of uh, 15. I don't know what they're saying there. Um, I'll oh, put $15,000 in this account. And that'd be about three months. There you go. So that's about three months uh, net income. I see what they're saying. All right. Uh, actually, I like that. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I, I'm a fan of that. Uh, retirement, they're saying 90, 10 stocks to bonds. Uh, taxable account. Let's we'll see what they're saying here. Account type is taxable. And general investing, a combination of the grow and preserve capital over time. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I like that. So that's uh, that's pretty good stuff there. Um, you know, we ninety percent stocks, ten percent bonds. We, okay. Yeah. Now they want me to open the account. So we already know what their portfolio gives. That list of twelve or thirteen ETFs is just gonna be a, you know, a breakdown of three point six percent there, five point nine two percent there, and so on and so on. So I don't need the specifics here, but that's pretty interesting. And I get that for. Um, I think it was for 25 basis points or one quarter of 1%. 
Is that what the fee? Yeah, right there. Yep, right there. 25 basis points, one quarter of 1%. Doesn't start anything to get started or cost anything to get started. Um, the premium is 40 basis points, uh, 100,000 minimum to get started. Uh, create a plan for man in depth advice out of investments outside of betterment. Okay. Use unlimited access to our CFP pros. Getting married, make sure your goals are aligned, uh, set, allocate your money across retirement plans, save for college, prioritize family goals. Um, all right, so most investments related stuff, and Schwab and Vanguard is doing the same thing. Uh, so they're offering that. Basically, you get this right here, but because you're getting a, a certified financial planner, a little bit more goal oriented, um, this is going to be 0.4%, and the minimum is 100,000 um, bucks. Managing equity-based compensation, so stock options and whatnot. That's pretty good. I wonder what they're, uh, they use for software to analyze that, but uh, no, I'm, I'm a fan. Absolutely. Uh, looking for a uh, retirement advisor network. Okay, that's what this guy is. Uh, looking for a dedicated one-on-one -on -one relationship with a financial advisor. Uh, we pre-vetted CFP professionals who can provide comprehensive financial planning. Um, that's pretty interesting. All right. So yeah, I like Betterment. I know it's easy to open an account there. Just basically I started it about, I was about a third of the way through click, 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 boom. Um, and here they have their own dedicated advisor team that you could partner with. One of these days I might do that. We'll see, but at this stage I haven't done it yet. Um, yeah, uh, we works primarily with members of FPA financial planning association. So, so that's good stuff. All right. So I'm a fan of Betterment. I, there's a lot of good stuff in here. If you're uh, interested in like tax efficient investing as well, you should be. I think Betterment has taken the bull by the horns here and has led the industry to understand tax efficient investing for sure. Asset location right here. They talk about asset location as opposed to asset allocation, asset, asset location uh, is huge. Increase your portfolio uh, value by an estimated fifteen percent over thirty years, just by where you place your individual investments. One of these days, I'll do a, a, a YouTube video on this right here, this methodology, because it's critically, critically important to understand. So, Betterman, I'm a I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, of this. And oh yeah, look, there's all kinds of great charts to show you. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so that's Betterment, my friends. So basically 25 basis points for uh, for RoboAdvisor. We can install call as much as you want, a licensed professional to talk about it, your investments that you have with them. If you want more than that, you need $100,000 to get started. Uh, 40 basis points are basically a little bit less than one half, 1%, 0.4%, if you will. And you get licensed or a CFP, certified financial planners you can talk to about more than just your investment strategy, but different strategies that go along with your investments, your retirement planning, stock option compensation, getting married and things of that nature. So uh, Betterman is pretty good. I like it. Um, uh, you know, the fee structure is, is good. The ETFs they use are fine, heavily diversified. I don't have any qualms. So that's uh, Betterman's good stuff there. So I'm going to end that with this time here. So we're in my next episode, I'll give you my, my recommendations for sure. If you watched all six, you probably have a pretty good gauge where I'm going with this. But uh, uh, but we've uncovered some good stuff here, my friends. And I hope this has been helpful to you. Don't forget, always go to heritagewealthplanning.com. That's my website. Uh, give me a thumbs up for sure, if you will. Any content you hear that you want me to cover, any firms you want me to look at, I'm happy to do so. Uh, comments are always helpful down below. The more comments and thumbs up you get, the more YouTube recognizes uh, heritagewealthplanning.com, our YouTube channel. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, my friends. Just hit subscribe. There's a little notification bell to be notified of future content. And you'll get a little bell up here. And I'll see it up here right now that shows you when I produce new content. So look forward to seeing you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.